live sport. Notre Dame has waited a year to hear those bagpipes lead the Irish onto the field in the NCAA tournament. Can't think of a better way to welcome you to Arlotta Stadium as the three seed Notre Dame hosts the A-Sun champions, Utah. It's the second of four games today to start the NCAA tournament. A year ago, everybody talking about how the Irish was not in this tournament. Now they are and they get a Utah team making some history today. The first time in program history, Utah is in the NCAA tournament. With that, we welcome you in, Jules Henningberg, Jay Alter with you. This should be a great game, especially if you like goals, Jules. These are two of the top three highest scoring teams in the nation. Yeah, and they do it in entirely different fashion with Utah. They're second in the country right now in goals per game at about 17, but they're also second in pace to play. What's that mean? They hurry up offense in football. They're just trying to go, go, go. It's sub game, it's clearing the ball fast, it's the gray area. Is that gonna work against the best defense in the ACC in Notre Dame? You know, they're going against an extremely efficient offense headlined by Pat Cavanaugh earlier this week, named as a Tawaraton finalist. And really, he gets things going for this Notre Dame team. Yeah, he does indeed. And they're sitting, sitting in that 52nd pace of play led by Pat Cavanaugh. Pat Cavanaugh, much more methodical approach. He can do it all. You see right there, his ability to shoot the ball with his right hand. But to me, it's his ability outside of his assist to just compete in the ride. He does such a great job bringing energy in that ride and forcing turnovers for his team that are such big energy plays and just gets everyone going. Yeah, for Utah, you mentioned the chaotic nature to their offense. Ryan Steins has been a catalyst, the A-Sun freshman of the year. Yeah, the freshman, freshman phenom. 37 goals this year, and he can do it in an exciting fashion. You see right there, the lefty one hand, unbelievable. But when he needs to, to turn it down a little bit and just be fundamentally sound, he can too. Great balance getting up the hash with both hands. You see it lefty there, you see it righty there. Watch out for the superstar freshman today. Now that Steins in Utah are going to pull this upset, it starts at the faceoff X. Cole Brams in red. Look at what he did in the A-Sun championship game. Won 21 of 23, Notre Dame. Their last four games under 40% from the faceoff X. Here's Kavanaugh, almost made quick work in the opening seconds of this NCAA tournament game. Jules talked about how dangerous he is in the ground ball game, and we saw that excellent save by the freshman Colin Lenskold called into action quickly for the Utes. Now we told you it'd be a fast-paced, chaotic game with lots of goals and almost got the opening one through Pat Cavanaugh. Utah settles into their opening possession of this game. The Utes on an 11-game winning streak. But they have not faced a defense or a goalie in Liam Entman as talented as this one. Here's MJ McMahon. Good. Curl it around the cage. This is a slower opening possession than we're used to with Utah. Who would like to push the pace throughout this game. Great save, Entman, read it the whole way. Yeah, that's a great first take for Utah, but you see right there Liam Entman just doing what he does best and just absolutely gobbling that shot up. ACC Defensive Player of the Year, ACC Goalkeeper of the Year, and First teamer in the conference. And now Notre Dame can get their first settled possession. High powered offense led by the Kavanaugh brothers. Touched on Pat number 51 in white. Chris number 50. But it's not those two alone, Jules. This is a really deep and balanced attack. Yeah, I, I think this is the deepest Notre Dame offense that they've had in, in really the history of their program. At that first midfield, you have Eric Dobson, Quinn McMahon, Riley Gray, combined for 52 goals so far this year. Dobson lost his footing, number eight in white there. Utah thought they had a takeaway, one back well by Brian Tevlin, drafted earlier this week to the PLL in the second round to the Redwoods, so a future teammate of yours, Jules. Yes, indeed, and a former teammate as well at Seton Hall Prep back in high school. And Jake Taylor just couldn't get that out of his stick cleanly. Run down by Chris Kavanaugh. Off the 
top of the bar. All pipe there from Pat Cavanaugh. He's had two really good looks in the opening minutes. Yeah, dynamic move there, that right to left split by Pat Cavanaugh just rang off the pipe. But if you can get short six early like that, it's going to be a long day for Utah's defense. This is Riley Gray. Pat Cavanaugh, one of five to Orton finalists named a few days ago. Another great save. Lens called to the rescue again. He's been active early in this game for Utah. Notre Dame, four shots, none have found the back of the net. Pat Kavanaugh gets the hands free. Usually he'll make you pay. Open the scoring here at South Bend. Just a strong 1v1 move by Riley Gray here. Well, from Lake Klockner to a beautiful day in South Bend, 75 degrees here. Jules Henningberg, Jay Alter with you as our NCAA tournament coverage continues. This is the second of eight games of this opening weekend. For my money, the best weekend in the sport is here. It is win or go home. Yeah, and win or go home. Riley Gray gets the first one on the board for Notre Dame. Just a strong take. Notre Dame's up 1-0. The Irish have control of this game early. Just a 1-0 lead, but they have piled on the pressure. Five goals, a couple of big saves from the freshman, Colin Lenskold for Utah. If you like goals, this is the game for you. Two of the top three highest scoring teams in the country. Makes it 2 0 Irish. Strong start for the Irish here. Great sweep there by Griffin Westland, and then he sets a screen which doesn't necessarily free Chris's hands, but just gives him a little bit more space for his right hand to get over the middle and score that shot, showing his range as an on-the-run shooter as well. Notre Dame make it, take it, lacrosse right now. Another face-off win through Will Lynch, who went all the way to goal, couldn't quite squeeze it past Lenskold. You know, for Notre Dame, they have waited a year for this game. That controversial postseason snub a year ago. They took it personally, Chris Cavanaugh, telling Paul Carcaterra on through X that that snub has driven us every day. They put last year's bracket in the locker room as a daily reminder. They worked hard to leave, no doubt, this season. Yeah, no doubt indeed. And you can see it in the way that they play. They have such an edge this year and passion that's really driven by the Kavanaugh's. But it's unbelievable how hard those guys play given last year. Here's Pat Kavanaugh, so crafty. One of the best feeders of the sport. Gets another assist. This one to Jake Taylor. Pat Cavanaugh, who leads the country in assists, a Tawaraton finalist, and Taylor, he's just your quintessential finisher for Notre Dame. It's great to have a guy like Jake Taylor on your team, who you know you could just throw the ball into and get assists. And watch Pat Cavanaugh here get into his left hand. And Taylor just settling into the green comfortably. But then gets to his left hand, which you don't see a ton out of Jake Taylor. But great job protecting his stick and then on the run just burying it off pipe. They have that built-in chemistry. 
five minutes gone by in this opening quarter. A 3 nothing Notre Dame lead. What a start. And I think a lot of that has to do with that postseason snub a year ago. They were devastated not to make the tournament. Felt like they, if they got in, they could have won the entire thing a year ago. And they have used that to drive them. And they are shot out of a cannon to start this NCAA tournament opening round. And the big question mark was the face-off X, under 40% in the last four games. Utah won over 90% in their ASUN championship game, and yet the Irish have won every single face-off to start this game. Three goals in 90 seconds. The Irish looking for more. How do you try and weather this storm right now if you're Utah, Jules? If you're Utah, you just got to limit their hands free in the middle of the field right now. Notre Dame's doing a terrific job of just getting shots right in the middle. That makes it really hard for Lenskold. Force hard shots for Notre Dame. It's too easy right now for the Irish. Jake Taylor again. What a start. What a start indeed. And, and I was just mentioning, these are too easy of shots for Notre Dame right now and making it so difficult for Lenskull. You see Jake Taylor just slips the screen there. Poor communication and just showing his mobility. He's a guy that's usually in front of the goal, but he's behind there in the two-man game and just gets around, finishes that, absorbs the contact. Fantastic finish by Taylor there. That last second, he just tucks it to the near corner. Timeout, Utah. It is all Notre Dame early. 4 nothing Irish, and we're just getting started. Now, what a perfect start to this game for Kevin Corrigan at Notre Dame. Five NCAA championship weekend appearances, but it is 35 years. He's never won it all. Many people think this could be the year, and they have certainly started this tournament strongly, up 4-0 in this first quarter. Drew Mickman on the other side for Utah in his second season has already accomplished a lot, making the NCAA tournament for the first time in program history. They got to start winning some face-offs, getting some possession. It said it stays Notre Dame. They've won all five at the dot. They've been extremely efficient in possession as well. Four goals in their last five shots. As a player, Jules, how much of this strong start do you attribute to the emotions of being left out a year ago? Well, I think the emotions absolutely play a huge part into it. But I also think these guys just seem fresh. And I know we, we talked to Coach Corrigan. He said that this week of prep, they had a ton of finals. They had a lot going on on campus. He wasn't trying to overdo it. They see him coming out of this game in that first quarter. Right now, just a ton of energy. Yeah, Kevin Corrigan said he spoke with legendary soccer coach Bruce Arena, who was actually an assistant lacrosse coach at Virginia when Corrigan was a player. Arena's won five MLS Cups, five college cups. And he said, what's the key to getting it done? And he said, less is more, do less. And so Corrigan said we want to keep the guys mentally and physically fresh. They have certainly looked that way to start this game. He rings in off the pipe. Riley Gray again. That's his second goal. And it is all Irish early. They're just manhandling Utah right now. There's just nothing else you can say about that. I was on the field earlier before this game, and I saw Riley Gray. I was astonished how big he was when I was on the field. He just does a great job getting up the hash right there, not concerned at all about the Utah defender, and then just finishes it with his offhand to the far pipe. It's just way too easy for Notre Dame right now. So Utah finally wins possession off the face-off. 
And we told you about the Utes' chaotic style. They like to push the tempo. Haven't gotten a chance to see it. Got the ball at the opening minute, fired one shot, and they have not had it since. Yeah, what's going to be difficult here, Jay, just the, the style that they play, sometimes it's all or nothing. They really need to stop the bleeding right, right now, and they don't want to settle for the first shot. So let's see if they can put it together, find an efficient offensive possession. Our second of eight NCAA tournament games across today and tomorrow. College of the Cross owning ESPN. We've got Georgetown and Yale, Maryland Army coming up on ESPNU after us. A little bit of a force there from Utah. Koa Todd trailing 5 0, trying to make something happen way too easy for Entman. And that's just like I mentioned, Jay, it's, it's the first shot that they look for and kind of settled, but it's in their nature to do that. They're going to need to reel that in if they don't want this game to get too out of hand in the first quarter. Arlotta Stadium has been home to some excellent crowds all season long. No different today. The hill is packed, rooting on the number three team in this tournament. Jake Taylor, a first quarter hat trick for the senior out of Denver, Colorado. And those fans enjoying a spectacle. It's already 6-0. I want to give a lot of credit to the Notre Dame coaching staff right now because every single one of these goals has been scored in the front of the cage and they're tough goals. They're not settling for these low angle shots. They're drawing slides in the middle of the field and getting high efficient scoring opportunities. That's what's making this Notre Dame offense so deadly right now. And Jake Taylor just settling into the green again, which he does so well, looking for the assist opportunities and varying when he gets them. Taylor's seventh career hat trick. This one comes in nine minutes. Just an incredible start for Notre Dame. And if you had a feeling before this tournament that this could finally be the year, you certainly see that spark in this opening round matchup. I mean, this Notre Dame offense specifically looks different than they have in the past. They've always had the strong defense but it feels like they have a balance of offense and defense that might just really get them to that last game. After two early saves for the freshman goalie, Colin Lenzgold, it has been all Notre Dame. Six straight goals in this first quarter. Utah has been starved for the ball. This has been one-way traffic. Crossfield pass finds Dobson. He's got a cannon. Six foot five, 235. So much power built in that all ACC midfield body and if you're Utah's defense right now you have to slide early and often well, that's the first time Utah creates a turnover a desperate need for a spark they certainly have the offensive talent to do it averaging just under 17 goals per game came in with tons of confidence They've won 11 straight games. Last loss all the way back on March 4th to Rutgers. But they were hit with a tidal wave of Notre Dame. 6-0 start. They have failed to find their footing in this opening quarter. What I will say, Jay, though, this, again, this style of play that Utah has, they're going to play desperate, and you don't want to play a team that has the chaotic style that they have if they are desperate. So they need to stay locked in here. 20 seconds on the shot clock. Nothing coming easy in this opening quarter for Utah. Good. Keep them out. McMahon double teamed in trouble. Shot clock down to five. 
Entman off his line, scoops up the ground ball. And now Notre Dame can start the clear. In the game, Jules, we talked about contrasting styles. Utah wants to push that tempo. Notre Dame find to slow it down and be more efficient. Certainly gone Notre Dame's way. They have controlled the pace and tempo of this game to start. They have indeed. And if you're Utah's defense, you have to start sliding earlier. So Notre Dame, watch out for them to get even more assisted goal scoring opportunities than they already have. Stay Notre Dame ball. Utah got a touch. Straight to the cage, and it's seven nothing Notre Dame. Griffin Westland. Watch Westland just get underneath there. Utah looked like they want to slide, but they weren't quite sure. But again, they have to start going here. This is just way too easy for Westland. He sees that no one's coming. I'm going to get to my strong hand underneath and just finish that. It's too easy for Notre Dame. Credit Will Lynch, the sophomore, who is really dominated the face-off backs in this first quarter. And it has just been one-way traffic. And Notre Dame has cashed in on it. It's too easy! <laughs> Ross Bergmaster, the long pole. He's known as the bagpiper who we watched walk out earlier today, and now he's in the score sheet with a goal. Notre Dame showing off that they can play a little bit of that sub game, too. Three long poles down there, and Bergmaster just showing his finesse on the crease. When your deep poles are scoring like that, you know it's too easy. Everyone's feasting right now, Jay. <laughs> The assist goes to Will Donovan, freshman, all ACC long stick midfielder. Five different scores for Notre Dame. An 8 nothing start. And another face-off win. This is a runaway train in the opening quarter. An incredible achievement for Utah to make the NCAA tournament. Only the fourth full season. And they are getting a taste of what it's like to play against the best. They got a hungry, driven Notre Dame team that has really opened things up in this opening quarter. You know, everything just seems to be going right for Notre Dame right now. You gotta believe that at some point the bleeding's gonna stop and Utah's gonna settle in and we'll start to see that chaotic style come to life. Now right on cue. A defensive stop for Utah. Those have been few and far between in the opening 15 minutes. That's the kind of break you're looking for though if you're Utah. Steal a possession, get the ball, get your first goal, right? And then, then you can start to settle in, build your confidence. And they've only attempted two shots in this first quarter. Both easy saves for Entebbe. Notre Dame has had 17 shots. They have piled on the pressure. Their foot is firmly planted on that gas. Yeah. 
This is a team that is not accustomed to going scoreless in a quarter. They average 17, just under 17 goals per game. Second in all of Division I. A nightmare start, but can they salvage something at the end of the quarter? Five seconds left in it. Trying to get the hands free. A bouncer. Read well by Antibin. And Notre Dame closes the first quarter with a Liam Antibin save. You could not have scripted a better 15 minutes for the Irish. You absolutely could not have. What a way to start if you're Notre Dame just coming out, gunslinging, going up 8-0 in that first quarter. Utah shut out for the first time all season in the opening quarter of a game. Notre Dame explosive. They've been waiting a year for this moment. They're back in the NCAA tournament, and they're making the most of it. There's Notre Dame football head coach Marcus Freeman, and he's enjoyed quite the show, Jules. <laughs> yeah, he has indeed, and you love to see him supporting the Notre Dame lacrosse team. Just such a tight-knit community here at Notre Dame. Cole Brams wins the faceoff for Utah. That's only his second win of the day after he went over 90% from the X of the A-Sun Championship. A lot of game left, but you find yourselves down 8 nothing after the first quarter. What can you say? First, first and foremost, take a deep breath, right? We're here. This is our first NCAA tournament game. But we're, we deserve to be here. We deserve to play. Let's start making plays. Sometimes it just takes that individual effort to provide a spark. Here's MJ McMahon. And now Tyler Bradbury. This offense didn't have many possessions in that first quarter. Notre Dame so dominant at the faceoff exit. It was make it, take it lacrosse for much of that opening 15 minutes. Diving in, Carson Moyer finally puts Utah on the board. And look, Jay, Sometimes one player just needs to step up and make a play. Carson Moore here just takes his man one-on-one. -on -one. He says, enough's enough. I'm going to stop the bleeding. Let's get this game going. Phenomenal one-on-one -on -one effort here. Just protecting his stick the entire way, never giving his Notre Dame defender a chance to get that back check, and then finishing in front. Really tough goal there. Here's Brams gaining some momentum, goes right to goal. Did it trickle in? Still waiting for the official signal. Entman saying he kept it out. And they say play on. Unbelievable <laughs> by Entman. But you feel it, Utah. They want to go now. Let's play a game here. Now, Liam Entman, the ACC Defensive Player of the Year, Goalie of the Year, saying that it did not cross the line, and the officials have taken his word for it. From our vantage point, impossible to tell if it crossed the line or not, but those are the ones you need if you're Utah trying to come back from eight goals down. Entman takes a big hit. Ball's loose. Flags flying. And this will be a free possession for Utah as Entman scurries back into his cage. And it leads to a goal. Tyler Bradbury. This is more like it for Utah. The chaotic style. The turnover and the goal. Here we go. Let's go, Utah. Turning it on now. Look at that hit. Clean by Joey Bolston. And then in transition, this is the chaotic style that Utah wants to play. 
And just leaving Liam Entenmann out there to dry after that big hit, that's really tough to, to soak that hit, get back in the cage, and then make that stop. That was number 23, Tyler Bradbury. This is what Utah wants this game to be like. Now this is what Utah has done all season long. Now they won the A-Sun. They've won 11 straight games playing like that, a hard hit on the goalie, no less. And after the goal, we've been told there's been an unnecessary roughness on Notre Dame. So an excellent opening quarter for the Irish, but two goals to start this second quarter. Penalty assessed to Chris Cavanaugh. So Utah player up for a minute here. It's going to be Irish ball, so a great opportunity here to kill the player up. And just thank you. If that ball had trickled across the line, it would be three in a row for Utah with the Utes playing a player up. Momentum shifting in this second quarter. You do wonder what happened in that first quarter for Utah because this is what we expected the Utes to play like. Ground balls everywhere, flying to the ball, scored goals. Sometimes mentally, it's your first time here. Notre Dame's been here so many times before. They know what it feels like emotionally. You could tell that Utah, they just weren't really going as hard as they could. And now they're kind of settled in and you see that they're bringing the energy they brought all season long. Player up for another 10 seconds here. Trying to pick out a corner. Too much high heat there. Peter Hagen, the junior. For 50 seconds on the shot clock, but under 10 now in the player up. Do you go to goal here? Look for the best opportunity. No need to force it. If you don't score it, take the ball out, settle six on six. Back to even strength. and Excellent job to keep it in. MJ McMahon. Wow, that was a phenomenal ground ball by MJ McMahon. Super nifty. Both of these teams excellent in the ground ball game. And that extra possession, McMahon kept it alive. And Andriella cashes in for Utah. That's three in a row for the Utes. And Andriella just after this ground ball, wow. McMahon just- How did he keep that in? I have no idea. And Andriella just a great right to right move getting to the middle of the field, which Notre Dame's done all game long and finishes that shot. Timeout, Kevin Corrigan and Notre A proud grandmother for sure, as that ground ball led to a Utah goal. Another face off win for the Utes. That's three in a row. And momentum staying with Utah. Feels like they finally settled in, and now they're starting to play the brand of Utah lacrosse that we know them to play. How about this for Utah? In the opening 15 minutes, only two shots. In the first three minutes of this quarter, five shots, and three of them have gone in. We can't blame you if you were watching at home thinking this game was over after 8-0. Utah showing a lot of life in the second quarter. Big save there from Entenmann. Huge save, and you saw that sub game trying to catch Notre Dame off guard, running a guy out over the line, trying to get another guy in, get odd man situations. And with that save from Liam Entenmann, that is 500 career saves for the ACC Goalie of the Year. It's funny, so many people have said, ah, oh, he's been amazing this year. ACC Goalie of the Year, 56%, which is a really good stat. He's 56% on his career. So while he's having a really good year, he's had a really good career for Notre Dame. Yeah, and he's showcasing today why he's really the best goalie in the country, just making every save he's supposed to make and then a couple extra. That Notre Dame ride. 
Causing the ground ball, Utah recovers. The chaotic, unsettled style of Utah contrasting with Notre Dame's aggressive ride should make for a lot of fun ground balls. Coming up after us, Yale and Georgetown. That'll be an outstanding game as Utah comes inches away from adding another. We'll talk about Yale and Georgetown coming up at halftime as well as Maryland and Army. Two games that'll be so much fun later today. This is only our second of eight Opening round games of the NCAA tournament. Four coming tomorrow. Almost a three-quarters field goal from Chris Fake. Wow. We know that Utah can play that up-and-down style, but Notre Dame has it, too. They're ready to go. Lens cold off his line. Fake said, I'll give it a try. Chris Fake, he is a national champion. Won it in 2018 as a freshman for Yale, four-time All-American, now trying to finish his career in a dog pile again. Would be the first national championship in program history for Notre Dame. Tavlin, another Yale transfer, who won that national title with fake. Off the knee of Lenskold, and Utah coming up with stop after stop. These Utes love to run. Unsettled situation, so dangerous. They've made teams pay all season. That one, way off the mark. Way off the mark indeed. And that shot on the other end, down the alley, that's what Lenskel wants to see. Keep giving Lenskel those shots that aren't super easy in front of the cage for Notre Dame. Zach Chandler storming on for Utah. Kevin Corrigan, Notre Dame head coach, even telling us the toughest thing to manage when you play Utah is that sub game. Credit to Notre Dame's defense. They've done a really, really good job of identifying the mismatches and where the sub game is going on, and then being disciplined, locking and finding your man and settling down on the defense. Shot clock doesn't reset. It's at 30. Todd couldn't handle it. Ben Ramsey in on the ground ball, and now Notre Dame can run. Here's Chris Fake. Sides to smartly slow things down and hand off to Pat Cavanaugh, who steps on the gas. Great save, Lens Cold. Cavanaugh wants that one back. Phenomenal save by Lenskold there. After eight goals for Notre Dame in the first quarter, the Irish shut out midway through the second. It's allowed Utah to crawl back in this game. Still down five, but feeling a lot better now than they did at the end of that first quarter. Andriella, he's got a goal to his name. Not a great angle, and Entman hugged that pipe to make the save. Yeah, not a great angle, as you said there, Jay. You don't want to settle for those shots down the alley. That's what Lenskold got on the other side. We want to see more of those shots in the middle that they've been doing a better job of trying to get, but that's got to be consistent. Utah, only two shots in that first quarter. They have 10 in the second quarter. So even though they're all not going, they just feel like they're in the game, which they weren't in the first 15 minutes. Absolutely. You just hope if you're Utah, you didn't dig too much of a hole here because you know Notre Dame's going to come back and start to build their momentum again. What was the biggest comeback you've had as a player? Down how many? I want to say by maybe eight. All right, maybe that's the magic number for Utah. Notre Dame taken out of their rhythm, trying to find it here. 5.40 left to the second quarter. Chris Cavanaugh, so dangerous. Leading scorer on this Irish team. Now 
Now his brother Pat, Tawaraton finalist. One of the best feeders in the game. Almost added another assist there, but the shovel shot saved by Lens Cole. If that went in, Jay, Jake Taylor, Sports Center top 10. That would have been <laughs> ridiculous. It would have been Taylor's fourth goal, but that would have been by far the best of the bunch. Turnover. There's that Notre Dame can settle down with Chris Cavanaugh. It's that ride right there, Jay. Settle for a shot, Jake Taylor, and then you get it back. That must hurt if you're Utah. Everybody talks about the offense, and for good reason for Notre Dame. Number three scoring offense in the country, but they're the number six scoring defense, the only team in the country that could say they're top six in both scoring offense and defense, and a lot of that scoring defense is the run. Because you've got to beat everybody for Notre Dame, not just the dude. Yeah, they, they make it so hard. It, it really starts with the Cavanaugh's, and you saw there, Chris, with the turnover. And it's just an added layer to the game that not every team has, and it's, it's one that you can have in your back pocket just in case things aren't going your way. Here's Pat Cavanaugh. This is where he is so dangerous. Leads the country in assists. Look at the shot clock. This one, he takes himself. Pat Kavanaugh makes it 9-3, Notre Dame. Pat just showing his patience, his high IQ. This is why he's one of, if not the best player in the country. He gets upfield and gets a subtle pick right there. Was waiting on that from number three, Jack Simmons, and then he just finishes it with his left hand. When you are such a gifted feeder, school record assists this season, everybody's thinking, okay, he's gonna pass. But the ability to call your own number and finish at a high level like Pat Cavanaugh can just makes him so dangerous. But what I love most about that, Jay, is he earns his assists. He's not getting them necessarily always just in the full of the offense. He's attacking his matchup one-on-one, -on -one, drawing slides, and then feeding the ball. More than 13 minutes in between Notre Dame's eighth goal and ninth goal. Utah went on a mini three-nothing run during that time. But Notre Dame still extremely comfortable in this first half. Weaving through traffic, Lance Cole got a piece of it, I think. Now it just bounced over, shot clock did not reset. So 27 left on the timer, three minutes left in this first half. Before the goal, wave it off, Utah ball. It's a moving screen by number two, Fulton Bayman there. He did a good job of turning his back and trying to settle his feet, but if you're setting a screen to lacrosse, you can't be moving at all whatsoever. You have to be still as a statue. Utah trying to use that sub game. Quick shot, read well by Entman. Every time it feels like Utah might catch a break, might do something, might get back in this game, Liam Entman's right there to stop that. And credit to him for just making it really tough for Utah this whole game. Timeout, Notre Dame. Six goal lead for the Irish. They have been driven every day in practice to get back in the NCAA tournament after they were controversially snubbed a year ago, took it personally. Now back in the NCAA tournament. Virginia, the first team to advance. This is just game two of eight. Right after us, Georgetown, Yale to follow that army taking on Maryland. And you see Johns Hopkins, Bryant, that is noon Eastern time tomorrow, which will kick off another quadruple header. A back-to-back -back 
quadruple headers on ESPNU. Nothing better than that. Right, eight games that are win or go home. NCAA men's lacrosse coverage continues next weekend at the quarterfinals. Action begins at noontime Saturday, May 20th on ESPNU. For more information on the 2023 Men's Lacrosse Championship, visit NCAA.com. Your home for all 90 NCAA championships. If you're just joining us, <laughs> Notre Dame shot out of a cannon in the first quarter, went up 8 nothing. Only one goal in this second quarter. Utah's grabbed a foothold in this game, but Liam Entenman, eight saves. He's been very comfortable for the Irish, and six goals is still a big deficit for Utah to be facing. Absolutely a big deficit, and, and when Liam Entenman's playing at the first-team All-American level he's playing at, if you're Utah, you're going to have to get shots around the goal because he's not letting any in outside of 10 yards, especially down the alleys. That's why many people think it feels like the year that Notre Dame will finally win their first national championship in program history. You've got the goalie, you've got the star-studded attack. The rope unit of Will Donovan, Jose Boyer, Ben Ramsey, Nick Harris has been excellent. And the depth. Yeah, exactly. We have seen that in this first half, a 9-3 lead. Reload the attack with two minutes remaining in this first half. Eric Dobson hasn't even scored a goal yet. The brother connection! Chris finds Pat, and the Kavanaugh connection makes it 10-3 Notre Dame. There's mom Mary Kavanaugh. Mother's Day weekend, nothing better than a brother-to-brother -brother goal. You see the smile on her face. This is chemistry built in the backyard right there. Chris just doing a phenomenal job drawing the slide with his head up, not letting the slide get to his hands, rolling away right there, with enough room to feed the ball, and then Pat just following ever so slightly in the green, one touching that into the back of the cage. How many times did Mary Cavanaugh watch that in her backyard and now she gets to watch it in the NCAA tournament. Mother's Day weekend, there is nothing better than mom's love and there is no more important mother than Notre Dame lacrosse than Mary Cavanaugh. What a special memory this will be for the rest of their lives with the Cavanaugh's, being able to see both those guys compete today on Mother's Day. Uh, we asked Coach Corgan about Mary Cavanaugh, knowing it was Mother's Day weekend and her sons, Chris and Pat, being such an important part of this program and her older son, Matt, as well, who played for the Irish. And Coach Corgan told us the trademark Cavanaugh passion, fierceness, toughness comes from Mary. Yeah, she's really the one that gets the guys going. And it was funny to hear Coach talk about that because I wouldn't have really expected that. But now knowing, talking to Coach Corgan about that, talking to Matt a little bit about it, definitely reaffirms that she's the one that brings that passion, has that edge that you see the Kavanaugh brothers compete with every single time they step on the field. The extra pass from Pat Kavanaugh finds Jake Taylor. Taylor's fourth goal of this first half, and it's three in a row for the Irish to close this second quarter strongly. They have an edge, but they also look out for others. That's why he's such a good feeder. Watch back here. He could settle and take this shot. Pat, right there, he could have shot that ball, but instead he's got his head up. He's looking to get everyone involved in the offense. And Taylor, who, for my money, him and Xander Dixon do this the best of anyone in the country, just settle into the green, get their hands free, and finish the opportunities they get. Great 
ground ball from Will Donovan, all ACC long stick midfielder. Just a freshman, and it leads to a goal! Notre Dame pouring it on at the end of this first half. Ben Ramsey, another all ACC player on this Notre Dame roster. Yeah, this is more like it for an Irish team that went 13 minutes without scoring between the end of the first quarter and the start of the second. And I know the Irish have a 52 second adjusted rate for how fast they play in terms of their pace in the country, but when they want to go, they go. And you see it here, the best teams have a balance between the both. They know when to slow it down, but they also know when to turn the gas on. You see Tevlin does it right there and finds Ramsey, another unselfish play. And you're seeing those all over the field. Ramsey just settles into the green again. Really high IQ stuff off ball for Notre Dame's offense. We're seeing time and time again. Four goals in three and a half minutes for Notre Dame to take back command of this opening round matchup. Credit Utah, they took a big punch in that first quarter, battled back with three straight goals. But they will have a mountain to climb in this second half. Trailing by nine. Utah making the NCAA tournament for the first time at program history. Quarter. Thank you for joining us. Jules Hanningberg, Jay Alter with you. This is just game two of a loaded lacrosse weekend. There are six more still to come when we're done here at Notre Dame. Obviously in the driver's seat, a nine-goal lead. And in that first quarter, got out to an eight-nothing start. Jake Taylor led the way. Jake Taylor, what a great job he does. Just settling into the green off ball. And you see it every single time. He catches the ball, just knows exactly where he is, but he's, he showed he can carry the ball as well too. But what he does best, finds the soft spots in the middle of the defense, and then when he gets his opportunities, he makes them count. So efficient, it doesn't seem like he needs a lot of shots to score a lot of goals. Take a look at the first half stats. Utah only had two shots in that first quarter, so 12 in the second quarter. They grew into the game, but Notre Dame ended the first half so strongly. A four-goal run in the last three minutes and 30 seconds for Kevin Corrigan's team. So a commanding nine-goal lead as we start this second half. And Will Lynch picks up where he left off. Dominant in the faceoff X. In that first half, but Utah wins it back. Dangerous in transition. Chris Fake putting his body on the line to deflect it. We've talked a lot about Notre Dame's offensive prowess in that first half. 12 goals, but this Irish defense has showed up in a big way, too. Yeah, and led the way by Liam Entman. And again, that's an opportunity right there if you're Utah. You have to have that. And Liam Entman just closes the door on it. What impressed you most about Notre Dame in the first half? What impressed me most is just their ability to deal with the chaos that Utah's trying to throw at them. They do such a good job of recognizing the situation, whether they're subbing, whether they, they notice that there's something in the gray that's happening. They, everyone locks in and says, where's your man, do your job. Taylor picks out the corner again. His fifth goal. And we are just starting this third quarter. Jake Taylor has already tied a Notre Dame NCAA tournament record. One more that he would stand alone at the top. And Taylor, yet again, just so good at the subtle movement. What I mean by subtle is it doesn't, he doesn't have to move 100 miles an hour to get open. He's just moving in the three yard radius and just settles in. Great screen inside there to free him up and then catches, buries it, puts it right in the top left corner. Efficient and effective. Largest lead of the game for Notre Dame, 13 to three. Now the men's program taking after the Notre Dame women's team that scored a program record, 21 goals in their opening round matchup against Mercer. Second round action tomorrow against Florida, trying to win their way into the quarterfinal. Much like Notre Dame, who really has one foot in Annapolis, a 10 goal lead in the second half. 
Yeah, you need to stay disciplined, stay consistent, because with a team like Utah, things can definitely get chaotic pretty quickly, Jay. Here's Chris Cavanaugh. Cavanaugh brothers combined for six points in that first half. Taylor thought he was going to scoop it up and put it in the back of the net. Behind the back! Jack Simmons almost found his way on Sports Center top 10. It was almost Taylor with the one handed ground ball, and then Simmons with the quick ground ball there on the back. That would have been wild. Well, and you, when you get up by 10, you can play with some more freedom, right? Start feeling yourself a little bit. Right on cue! Making an 11 goal lead for the Irish. Jalen Seymour piling it on Utah in this first round. Start feeling yourself a little bit, but stick to the fundamentals. That's what Notre Dame's done all game long. Just sweeping over the top, getting to the middle. Another no slide opportunity by Utah, which is just completely unimaginable at this point. You have to go if you're getting your hands free in the middle of the field like that on a consistent basis, which Notre Dame is. It's just, it's just too easy, Jay. The ability for Notre Dame to not be complacent. A nine goal halftime leader. What do they do at the start of the third quarter? Foot still on that gas pedal, picking up right where they left off. It really shows a maturity level that is necessary, I believe, to win in May. And Notre Dame showcasing that right now. the seniors dame and it is 15-3 Notre Dame Riley Gray he's got a lot of confidence around that low wing area with his left hand he's just too big too strong for these Utah defenders once he lowers his shoulder there he gets that little bit of separation that he needs and then coming up the hash just does a really good job of getting that ball to the back pipe Of star players for Notre Dame, but I don't think there's anyone bigger than Will Lynch at the faceoff X. Cole Brams came in over 90% faceoff percentage in the A Sun Championship game for Utah. Lynch has taken 14, he has won 12 for Notre Dame. And we know for the Notre Dame teams of the past, the faceoff may have been potential issues for them. If this is something that can be cleaned up by Will Lynch. Right, they just have all the pieces that they need, it seems like, to make a deep run here. That's the big question. Can this be the team that finally brings that first national championship back to South Bend? They've certainly played like it so far this first round. He's a Tawaraton finalist. He may just go on and win the thing if he keeps playing like this. Another opportunity generated by Notre Dame, scoring opportunity in the middle of the field. It just seems like all their shots they're getting are directly in the middle, and that's the easiest shot to score if you're an offensive player, but the hardest shot to stop if you're Colin Lesko, then the Utah defense is just leaving him on an island mm. and having people 
like a Toraton finalist in Pat Kavanaugh hands free at 10 yards. That's just way too easy for him. This season, it's the one two punch of the Kavanaugh brothers. A ton of depth to back them up. But the Toraton finalist, Pat Kavanaugh, showing why he is one of those five finalists. And if Notre Dame wins the national championship, I think Pat Kavanaugh will be your Toraton winner. And I can agree with that sentiment, Jay. And I also think that that might go for Brendan O'Neill and C.J. Kirst as well, right? The, the guy that can kind of bring their team the furthest, and it's usually one or two, maybe three guys. That's that the tiebreaker, yeah, right? Yeah, that's the tiebreaker. How about this? Notre Dame, there's still more than 10 minutes left of the third quarter, has already tied the NCAA tournament record for goals in a game for for Notre Dame as a program. It was 16 entering today. Came in the first round of 2019 against Johns Hopkins. And this is an epic offensive performance. And they share the wealth on Notre Dame. That everyone gets involved in it's unselfish offense. It's a really fun brand of lacrosse to play in if you're playing for Notre Dame. Now what's interesting, if you look at Kevin Corrigan's team this year, they've got 10 wins. Eight of those 10 have been their opponent's worst loss of the season. Wow. So they're not just winning games. They're handing their opponents the worst loss of the season in terms of margin. Demolishing. And they're going to do it a ninth time because Utah's largest deficit was eight. Right now, Notre Dame up 13 and in control. At some point, you got to believe that Coach Corgan's going to start to insert some of the guys off the bench. When would you start that? I think let it get to midpoint of the third quarter, you know, about seven minutes, you know, six or seven minutes, get to 18, and then I'll call the dogs off. Remember, the mantra for this NCAA tournament from Coach Corgan is let's do less. Let's stay mentally and physically fresh. Got that from his former assistant coach at Virginia, Bruce Arena, went on to become one of the best soccer coaches in the country. Five MLS Cups, five College Cups at Virginia, and the all-time wins leader of the United States men's national team. But before he did all that, he was an assistant coach at Virginia, coaching lacrosse, Kevin Corrigan, a player, then later on staff for the Cavaliers. And that wisdom, just keep the guys fresh. And they have come out fresh, fired up, and have built a 13-goal lead. They have indeed. And they're still competing so hard, even though they're up 16-3, which, again, speaks to that maturity level. These guys are hungry. They remember what it felt like to not be in the tournament last year, and they're letting all that out right now in the, the field. The defense is as impressive as the offense. Absolutely. If not if not more impressive. Yeah. Right? I, I think that truly Lee Mitzman is leading and anchoring a defense that is one of, if not the best in the country. Ben Ramsey off the mark there. He is a reliable two-way player for this Notre Dame team. All ACC, short stick defensive midfielder. It, it's funny, Kevin Corgan telling us, when you think two-way midfielder, a lot of times you're thinking an offensive-minded player who can also help you on defense. Ramsey's a defensive guy first who really offers that attacking threat as well. Yeah, and you, and you love the versatility that they have out of guys. Another guy, Tevlin, who can get stops on defense like he is right here, but then pick up the ground ball and push transition. Right on cue. Here comes Notre Dame. They've got numbers. Will Donovan couldn't get the hands free with the long ball. This is what we expected, more back and forth. This is a style that Utah has played all season, and they just really never found that rhythm. Got the spark in the second quarter when they scored three goals in a row, but have lacked that consistency. Yeah, and just the execution, too. It almost feels like they get to the very end, and then they just don't convert, whether it's Liam Entman closing the door or just turning the ball over with a guy wide open on the crease for a dip and dunk. You know, it can't be said enough what an achievement it is that this Utah program that launched the sport 
in 2018, 2019. And because of COVID, this is really only the fourth full season that Utah has had men's lacrosse. The fact that they're already playing in the NCAA tournament in May. This is just the first of many building blocks when it comes to Utah's men's lacrosse program and their trajectory. Yeah, it's very impressive. It's hard enough to make an NCAA tournament, let alone doing it as a program that, as you mentioned, really their fourth full season. They're going to build on this. No matter what the outcome of this game, you know that Utah's going to take, take this experience and continue to develop as a program. the firepower today 21 minutes without a goal right now and this is your measuring stick right for all the guys coming back you know what the best of the best is in an NCAA tournament game now you're experiencing it for the first time and everyone's kind of got to go through this process big time goal on the run Andriella notches his second of the afternoon. 22 minutes in between goals for Utah. Strong take by Jared Andriella here, getting to his right hand, trying to keep Utah in this as much as possible. Getting to four for his number 16. Virginia, the first of eight teams that have booked a spot in the quarterfinals, taking care of business against Richmond, 17 to eight. So far, Notre Dame, they've got a, a foot firmly planted in Annapolis for next Sunday's quarterfinal. The Irish up 16 to four, still to come today. Georgetown and Yale, that's coming up right after us of the night. The nightcap is Maryland and Army. A lacrosse loaded weekend continues here on ESPNU. And it also continues next weekend in the quarterfinals. Action begins Saturday, May 20th, noon Eastern time on ESPNU. For more information, visit NCAA.com, your home for all 90 NCAA championships. Now, it's an understatement to say Notre Dame comfortably in the driver's seat, a 12-goal lead. And Will Lynch continues to dominate at the faceoff X. He has won 13 of 15 from the dot today. You look at this Notre Dame team, Jules, where do you see a weakness? Because I don't. I think we can't entirely call that out versus Utah team. I think that obviously that they were a little bit shocked right, to start this game. And Will Lynch is doing a tremendous job in the faceoff X. But I think if anywhere that they would potentially have a weakness, it would be at the faceoff dot, and we'll see if that plays out as they continue into the rest of this tournament. Dobson on the run, rings off the top of the bar. That would have been his first goal, the all ACC midfielder. Too, why we're getting a more lopsided game is Utah's style of play, chaotic, fast-paced, which is good when it's working for you, but it, when it works against you, it, it it's tough to work your way back into a game or make it less of a big lead for Notre Dame when you're just pushing that pace. A lot of teams that are trying to pull the upset will tell us we want less possessions. We want to slow this game down. It said Utah's doing the exact opposite. Extra possessions to Notre Dame has led to extra goals. 100%. And not to mention, when you have a guy like Liam Ensman who's making the stops that he should absolutely make, but then the ones that even are hard ones, he's making those too. So it just puts really a damper on Utah in terms of just their confidence and their risk-taking at the end of the day. So you just see they're a little bit more flat. They don't have the pop that they usually have. Entman nine saves now. Outlet pass that takes one bounce in front of Quinn McCann. Pat Cavanaugh tried to thread the needle. Jeffrey Richard Daly there on the doorstep. That might have been the first force of the game by Pat Cavanaugh. And what does he do? He follows it up with a hard ride, just absolutely 
popping his defender. What a play. What competitive nature he has. Up 16-4 to do that. Do you think what he does on the ride could help separate him when it comes to deciding who wins a tour, Tom? I think yes and no. I, I think at the end of the day, it's stylistic and it, it's something in, it's an intangible. But I, I really do believe the team that ends up going the furthest between Kirst, O'Neal, and Kavanaugh, they will ultimately win the award. Now this is a guy in Pat Kavanaugh that probably cares more about ground balls in the ride than scoring goals. You know, with NIL and everything we talk about in college athletics now, we probably don't talk enough about the positive causes that have come out of it. And Pat Kavanaugh has become an ambassador for City Lax, New York City. Every ground ball he picks up this season, he's donating $10. Remarkable move from a great player to a great student athlete. It just speaks again to his character and the Kavanaugh's character overall. You know, every single one of those guys has that. They have the same compete level. It's special to be able to watch them play as much as and play with. I play with Matt Kavanaugh as well. Big hit here. Take another look. Boom. Pat Kavanaugh laying the lumber. He's not big either, you know, but he packs such a punch when he lays that shoulder. Uh, Kevin Corrigan telling us, and it's Mother's Day weekend after all, that that fierceness, that toughness that you see on a big hit like that comes from his mother, Mary. Pat and Chris, just two of six Kavanaugh's. Entenmann's 10th save of the game. He's looking really comfortable in cage. And, and that 10th save right there, that's the one, he doesn't necessarily have to make that save. That's a difficult save to make. And Utah, that's a great shot that they earned, but it's just, he keeps closing the door and just crushing any confidence that Utah might have as a shooter. Now, this is a long possession for Utah, their longest of the game. Can't afford to come up empty, and they do. Jose Boyer, who's been excellent in his Irish career. Turnover, can't lead to a goal. Chris Cavanaugh right at the chest at Colin Lenskold. This is an opportunity. Utah. You know, offsides, just as you're saying, this is an opportunity. The Utes give it away. They have to take advantage of that. There can't be an offside there. That's got to be that, that transition that's pushing the ball that they need, the easy ones, because you're not getting it settled six on six right now at all. It looks like Notre Dame has subbed out Pat Kavanaugh, so his day might be done. 12 goal lead as we're under a minute left to this third quarter. The Irish comfortable of this first round matchup. From Utah here to finish off this quarter. Absolutely have to slide to Griffin Westland hard. Don't let him sweep over the top and get to his left hand. Now they let him get to that left hand. So dangerous. Here's Chris Kavanaugh. Five seconds on the shot clock. Ten left of the quarter. Tried to scoop it over to Westland. Nice defensive stop to end this third quarter for Utah. But this game, all Notre Dame. And Utah beats the buzzer to end the third quarter. The positives have been few and far between, but that's a big one for the, for the Utes. And it's the freshman Ryan Steins, the A-Sun freshman of the year. It's been quiet today, but a great goal to finish this third quarter. Great finish here by Ryan Steins. 
giving the youths that punch that they needed to finish the quarter. Now, what a difference a year makes for Kevin Corrigan to this Notre Dame men's lacrosse program. A year ago, even in the opening round that they were not in, they were still the talk of the tournament. How can you leave that Notre Dame team out with all that talent? Well, they have used it as fuel, and they have shown up in this first round. Utah won't quit, though. A scoop and score to start this fourth quarter. What a goal. Right off the face-off X. It's Trey Kaven just pushing with his feet. Says I'm gonna do it all by myself. Late slide there by Notre Dame. Didn't want to slide up field necessarily. Said we'd rather see Trey shoot this than anyone else. He just buries it. Two goals in seven seconds because remember they scored on the final second of the third quarter. And that is Utah's first face-off win of the entire second half, and it leads to a goal. You go more than 20 minutes scoreless of this game and then get two goals in a matter of seven seconds. Now that is the beauty of the sport, right? You can score, get the ball again, pile on goals. We saw Notre Dame do that in the opening quarter when they went out to an eight-nothing lead. Jay, you look at the game right now, you ask yourself, if you're the Utah staff, if you're the players on the field, what can you salvage from this game? And it's compete as hard as you can for the last 14 minutes. Make the plays that you can make and leave here with some pride. Now this game is gone. Notre Dame, eight goals in a row, then Utah with three. Then Notre Dame responded with another 8 nothing run. And now Utah has once again scored three in a row. Almost four in a row, inches away there. Entebbe bailed out by the pipe. Now going back to the comments we showed you coming out of the commercial break to start the fourth quarter from Paul Carcaterra and Quint Kesnick on last year's selection show. You know, that fuel can't be understated to this Notre Dame team. They put last year's bracket in the locker room, a daily reminder to work hard to leave no doubt this season. And what a storybook ending it would be. And, and they're far from it. Still have to finish this game and win three more. But to feel that rejection, that anger, and then a year later to win a national championship would be special. Special indeed. And I personally know how special it would be. I play with all those guys from Notre Dame. I know that this has been a long time coming. They, a lot of guys feel like this might be the year. This might be the best Notre Dame team that they've ever put together and they could potentially take it home. Yeah, Jules Hanningberg, member of the Redwoods and the PLL, which is basically the Notre Dame alumni team. <laughs> how, how many Notre Dame guys are on the team? Uh, I, I think at this point with um, just retirement, how things are shaking out, I think about eight or nine. And you just added Brian Tevlin yep. in the draft, second round pick. But a strong core, some of the best to ever do it at Notre Dame, including Matt Cavanaugh, who was my former teammate. He's now in the Boston Cannons, but brother of Pat and Chris Cavanaugh. The Off the heel of Chris Fake, that's the second time his body has gotten in the way. And to to the rescue again. He has made some spectacular saves in this opening round matchup. He is truly as good as advertised. I can't state that enough. He, in my opinion, has been the true difference maker for this Notre Dame game today. 13 saves. That one might have been the best one. It's really comfortable feeling knowing that you have a goalie that's going to make the saves he needs to make, but then get a couple extra. Just gives you that, that sense of confidence especially on the offensive side of the ball. Utah still playing with a lot of physicality, a lot of heart. They went down 8 nothing early, but they have not backed down in this matchup. Give this team a ton of credit. Only their fourth full season of playing men's lacrosse at the Division I level. 
making the tournament for the first time in school history. Plenty to be proud of, but today just not their day. Jeffrey Richard Daly adds another for Notre Dame, and with the 17th goal being scored for the Irish, that is a program record. Most goals scored in a tournament game for Notre Dame men's lacrosse. And Jeffrey Riccadelli here just doing a great job off of the Jack Simmons feed, but cutting behind the defense there. And what I loved about this cut is he doesn't do it too early, so he ends up on the top of the crease. He times it up perfectly, so when he catches the ball, he has room to catch it and finish it without stepping into the crease. Nine different Notre Dame scorers combining for that program record for goals at an NCAA tournament game. They have made a statement that the entire lacrosse world will hear loud and clear. Do you think they become the favorites with a performance like this? I can't quite 100% sure say that until I see how the other first round games shake out. But just based on this performance, the balance, the depth, Liam in the back of the cage, it, it does look like this team might be able to win it all. Now, Notre Dame 10 and two on the season. Those two losses have come against the same opponent, the Virginia Cavaliers. They advanced earlier today with a win against Richmond. They would be lined up to play in the semifinal on championship weekend. Tough to beat a team three times in a season. But yet, Virginia's looked so convincing against this Notre Dame team. Chris Cavanaugh adds another. Wow, he just made that look way too casual for me. <laughs> and I think it might be time for Chris to head to the bench. His day should be over. Yeah, you said 18 was the magic number, right? Yeah, this Watch here, he's got the short stick matchup on him, first of all, which is Utah's in trouble. Just catches it with his feet moving, drops his hands and just whips it off his hip to that back pipe. Beautiful shot. And his day is over indeed. There's a proud mom, Mary Cavadon, Mother's Day weekend. Her son's combining for nine points. 27 times they have combined on a goal and an assist. And their day is done. A little bit more than 10 minutes left to this fourth quarter. Both Pat and Chris Cavanaugh on the bench. Well deserved. <laughs> they left no doubt. Utah stretching. It's going to create a lot of opportunities like that one for Notre Dame to continue to pile on the goals here. Yeah, and if you're Notre Dame, this is a great opportunity to get some of your backups in, get some of the guys that have done a really great job for your program, the scout guys, right? Let them get the minutes that they deserve because they put a ton of effort in this season to get you to this moment to get all the starters prepared. And for Utah, a magical season. 10 minutes left in it. You win the A-Sun Championship. You make the NCAA Tournament for the first time in program history. A program that's really still in its infancy, only four years old. Or five years old, but only four full seasons because of the COVID year. Yeah! Griffin Westland. A flamethrower, 19-6 Irish. This Notre Dame team is not slowing down. Griffin Westland, former Seton Hall prep player. My Had to get mater. that in there. Have to get that in there. I remember watching him do this time and time again at Seton Hall, just getting up to his left hand. Attackman converted to midfield, really slick around that mid-wing area, getting up the hash, and just sticks it to the near side.
Coming up at 5 o'clock, NCAA first round coverage continues with Georgetown and Yale. The Hoya started this season 0-3. Since then, they have won 12 in a row, entering as the hottest team in the country in terms of winning streaks. Trying to advance to the quarterfinal. They failed to do it a year ago. Were the two seed. A lot of people thought they could win the entire thing, and they lost to the Blue Hens of Delaware in that opening round matchup. Chris Conlin, the takeaway for Notre Dame. And we saw Kevin Corrigan sub his offensive starters. That might be the final act for the starting defense. I think that goes along with what we heard Coach Corrigan say earlier, just trying to keep these guys mentally and physically fresh. Absolutely no reason to play the starters any longer here. Notre Dame has this game in the bag, but you do want to walk away from this game, continuing to learn, continuing to get better. So expect these starters to keep it up going 100, excuse me, these bench players to keep it up going 100 miles an hour, trying to make sure that this Notre Dame team can get better in this last seven minutes. And a lot of emphasis put this week on the sub play, the way Utah plays, chaotic, trying to create those mismatches. Notre Dame, and specifically Ryder Garnsey, who's controlling the box for the Irish today. They have done a really nice job. I can't think of one time they were caught out. No, credit to Ryder, and, and he is very passionate about the work that he does. I know he prepares very well. I was with him earlier. He knows everything about Utah's sub game and all the schematics and everything they were trying to do, and credit to him for being on top of his game today and not letting it impact Notre Dame's fundamentals. It's actually been Utah that's been caught out, caught out a couple of times in the sub game. Offsides there, gives the ball back to Notre Dame. And this would be the ninth time this season that Notre Dame has handed their opponents their worst loss of the year. You know, prior to this game, Utah's largest defeat was eight goals, trailing by 13. It's a big point. Not only is Notre Dame winning this season, they're handing their opponents their worst loss of the year. What are you doing on both ends of the field? It's the balance, right? You're not scoring on Liam Entman. Well, speaking of Liam Entman, he just has subbed out of this game. Right on cue. Alex Zepp in between the pipes now for the Irish. Standing ovation you hear from Liam, Liam Entman. Phenomenal job today in Cage. Just demonstrating again why he was the ACC Defensive Player of the Year, Goalie of the Year, and a first team All-American. Weaving through traffic, Zepp! Right onto the field, and he makes the save. There's nothing better than that when you have a goalie in change, and right away he gets a shot and makes a save. You just love to see that out of your backup. Just it's such a rewarding feeling, knowing how hard these guys work for these moments. You can just let them get in there and have their time, too. Another one out of the Chaminade Mafia that's here in South Bend. <laughs> just a sophomore. So his best days are ahead of him, but great save there. And coming out cold, that's really hard to do. Yeah, very difficult to do. So we've talked a lot about the games that are still to come, Georgetown and Yale, and then Maryland Army, the nightcap. Taking a look at the four games tomorrow, Jules, which one do you have your eye on? Absolutely tomorrow. Cornell, Michigan, first and foremost. I know Cornell has CJ Kirst, but the way that this Michigan team is playing right now, they have so much confidence. I have to believe that if Bame is on and they play a full 60-minute game, that they're going to really make it a test for Cornell. And then Penn State-Princeton, I don't know who's going to be able to come out on top of that one. Penn State's done a phenomenal job of the Big Ten. Princeton's been a little bit up and down. I really like TJ Malone, but Colter Mackesy potentially had the nod to be a torch on finalists as well. So I'm excited for that matchup. 
Shot clock down to five, under five minutes left in the game as well. For the next game coming your way at five Eastern time, that's Georgetown and Yale. So we'll take you up to the top of the hour here at South Bend. We might have to get into a little Redwood season preview. <laughs> Big draft earlier this week in the PLL. Another save for Zepp. Big outlet as well. The second stringers running and gunning. Make it 20. Taking the cage out too. It's all Notre Dame in this opening round game. Fulton Bayman of a great outlet after the save. And it is just Notre Dame's day. Before this game, Jay, I was watching Fulton Bayman getting dodging up, getting shots up, working so hard for about 40 minutes on his own. And I talked to some of the guys and say he's one of the hardest working guys on the team. 30 minutes before practice, 30 minutes after. And that speaks to really where this Notre Dame program is right now. And they go up 20 to 6. Now Utah's NCAA tournament coming to a close, but the program making it for the first time since the program launched in 2019 in an incredible achievement. You know, Coach Holman starting the program and then Drew Mickman taking over. This is his second year as head coach, but a ton of PLL guys, Marcus Holman, Will Manny, Adam Gittleman on that inaugural Utah staff, built the foundation for Drew Mickman to come in, take over, and he's done a marvelous job navigating this team to the NCAA tournament. And they're way ahead of schedule. You take a, a, a look at a team like Michigan that is also in the NCAA tournament for the first time, but took a lot longer. And you just feel like this Utah program has an extremely bright future. Yeah, and to your point, maybe a lot easier to potentially build at a school like Michigan where you know they have the history athletically and with the academics. Utah, though, on the other hand, maybe not so much, but in talking to Coach, Right? It's a special place. The environment that Utah is, just the nature, the ability for you to go out there and just feel that open space, that air, it's different. And he knows when guys get on campus and feel that, it's somewhere that they want to go. They don't exactly have a talent-rich pool to fish in in their backyard. They've got to go all over the country. Look at their starting attack line. A kid from Michigan, a kid from California, and a kid from North Carolina. So you are literally going coast to coast to recruit. And if they stay atop the A Sun and continue to win that automatic qualifier, I think this will be the first of many first round matchups between Utah and Notre Dame because the geography piece is such a big factor in how the selection committee determines pairings. So this is the benchmark now. You've gotten that taste for the first time in the NCAA tournament. Sometimes that's what you need. You need that benchmark. Notre Dame's been here before. They're battle-tested. They've had a ton of opportunities to play in the NCAA tournament and get to championship weekend. Great goal on the run. It's a hat trick for Jared Andriella, the junior out of Raleigh, North Carolina. So he'll be back. A lot of these players will be back. A lot of juniors and below on this Utah team. Andriella's one of them. And championships aren't built overnight. And having guys like Jared Andrella coming back with this experience, you see here just getting top side on a pole too, showing his confidence, burying that low and away. It says a lot where this Utah program can go in the future. Utah goal is third of the afternoon. Number two, Jared Andrella. Notre Dame shot out to an 8-0 lead and really never looked back. A team that has waited a year to be in this tournament, now making the most of it. They will look ahead to Annapolis in the quarterfinal, take on the winner of Johns Hopkins and Bryant. game is tomorrow noon Eastern time on ESPNU the first 
of another quadruple header. This is just game number two, so six still to come in this opening round action of the men's lacrosse tournament. Two minutes left in South Bend. What has impressed you most about Notre Dame today? I think just their balance across the field offensively. We know the Kavanaugh brothers, but they have so many different options outside of them that can score. And again, Eric Dobson, he had one shot today that rang off the pipe, but he didn't have a, even have a goal, and they've gotten a 20. That shows how deep they really are on offense. And then, of course, defensively, their fundamentals. But Liam Entzman Cage, I think he, he's the best goaltender that Notre Dame's probably ever had in program history. And, and that's a big bump than what's, what it's been in years past and a reason why I think that they can take this all, all home. Now they've set a program record for goals in an NCAA tournament game with 20. And they will have handed their opponent the ninth time this year the largest loss their opponent has suffered. I, I think that's the biggest stat for Notre Dame this season. Not only are they going to improve to 11 and 2, but nine of those 11 wins are the worst loss their opponent has suffered this year. They're not just Let's winning games, away. they are dominating, and they certainly did that today. They did indeed, and special for the Kavanaugh brothers having their mother here. Awesome to see them go up 27, get the scout team in, let everyone get a touch, get a feel for playing an NCAA tournament game. Just overall, tremendous job by Notre Dame. Now they left no doubt today. An eight nothing opening quarter and a 20 to seven win commanding for the Irish and Notre Dame headed to the quarterfinal with a real belief that this is the year that Kevin Corrigan gets his national championship. It felt different today. You could see it in their eyes, specifically Liam Entman, just a vengeance. They're out to win this thing. Still three more games to go, so you don't want to get ahead of yourself, but you couldn't have played much better than the Irish did today. No, absolutely not. And, and you saw it across the board from offense to defense to middle of the field. And Will Lynch, everything was working today for the Irish. But credit to Utah for coming out here, showing up. I know they didn't have the start that they wanted, but you saw that punch in the second quarter, saw flashes of it. They just weren't able to put it together for a full 60-minute game. But they'll be back. And a magical season comes to a close for Utah, the A-Sun champions, making program history. Uh, in program just in their infancy, just getting started, only their fourth full season, making it to this stage, an incredible job, but just really got blitzed out of the gate, went down 8 nothing, and really couldn't recover from there. It's really hard to make a comeback if you're any team going down 8-0, but specifically versus Notre Dame with the way that they play defense and how well Liam played in, in cage today. It, it was just, it was too difficult. 13 saves from Liam Entman, who was stout in cage once again. And a convincing 20-7 win for Notre Dame. The Irish headed to the quarterfinals. We'll talk with their head coach, Kevin Corrigan, when we come back.